the pandemic and all, we realized, most of America has realized how important it is. And there's been many challenges here, but I also believe that there's the many ideas that are already working that we need to expand on further. And we also have to look at communities and how important they are too. In, um, for instance, my community, Sacramento, there's been an additional commitment to really ensure everyone who needs broadband has access to it because it's so, so very, very important. In fact, when the CARES funding came, they used a portion of it to distribute to 1,300 hotspots at libraries serving more than 1,000 families. And those who received the hotspot also got hands-on training to ensure they had the skills they need to use these tools. Now, thanks to updates included in the American Rescue Plan, these libraries are now preparing to extend their broadband service further into the community, reaching people where they live. Now, we've made progress, but I think we already know now how much more needs to get done. Uh, the high costs of broadband service, digital redlining are still keeping American families on the wrong side of the digital divide. Now, I've mentioned libraries because they are anchor institutions. And I really believe in, um, as Ashley was saying, how important municipalities are and communities working together. Anchor institutions are, are really powerful. And I look at libraries because they're powerful force for connectivity by you know, distributing the hotspots and providing on-site digital training for those who need it. And this approach realizes that connectivity alone is not enough to get families online. Digital literacy and equipment training is a fundamental part of increasing adoption. Ms. Ochilla, what role can community anchor institutions like libraries or schools or community centers play in promoting digital literacy amongst under-resourced households? Uh when we're thank you for the question, Congresswoman. And when we're talking about librarians, they're very often and they are the people uh, that are actually for about 30% of people who are living near the poverty line rely on their local library for reliable access. So that's going to be the place where they go for information on taxes, COVID relief, um, how do I get in touch with you know whatever services that they need, and they're also going to use librarians as a coach. And especially in, in schools, a lot of the times we know that when students need reduced lunch and other social services, schools are going to play an imperative role in being able to identify who needs service. Okay, and how have um, public Wi Fi networks or other community broadband access points helped cover the gaps in service? They are essential because very often you will have uh, um, large amounts of the community look at COVID. We knew that there were actually libraries that actually went in and turned their equipment outward towards parking lots to make sure that people had reliable access points because they fill in the gaps. So while whether it's you, you trying to figure out a solution with a provider or your local government trying to figure out a stopgap solution, very often schools and libraries are going to be there to fill in the gaps. And also they might be able to help support um, ideation where you can get people together to say, should we build a mesh network? Should sure. we a partner with other people? Well, they're trusted institutions. That's why I really want to use libraries. 